Hello, my name is Cindy Hoff Dennis, and I am a wildlife veterinarian at the Janet L. Swanson Wildlife Hospital at Cornell University. The goal of this tutorial is to provide you with techniques to improve long term success and release of wild birds treated surgically for fractures with some short term rehabilitation techniques, including appropriate wound management, bandaging, cryotherapy, passive range of motion, and photobiomodulation or laser. We will begin with wound management using this deceased barred owl, which I have placed a surgical fixator on the ulna post-mortem as an example of a post-operative site. All pin sites should be checked and areas of discharge around pin sites and surgical incisions should be cleaned with dilute chlorhexidine gluconate, then rinsed off with sterile water after one minute of contact time daily while active discharge is occurring. After cleaning all of the surgical sites, a non-adherent bandage should be applied between the pins to protect the surgical site and absorb any further discharge to reduce tissue maceration. You can do this by cutting a small notch in each piece of bandaging material and sliding them under the external surgical bar. A figure of eight bandage should then be applied over this non-adherent bandage. This bandage should be changed every day for the first three to five days after surgery. The first loop of the bandage should be placed around the carpus like this. Then under the axilla region, including this patch of scapular feathers with the wing and ensuring that this sits above the elbow and that the wing is held in a normal resting position. The cotton should then be covered with a layer of vet wrap following the same pattern in a figure of eight around the wing like this. The bandage should be changed once daily as long as active discharge is occurring. It can be removed when this has resolved and there is not a significant wing droop present. This is typically within the first three to seven days after surgery. You may also want to cover exposed hardware with bandaging material to protect both the handler and the bird from injury. If the fracture includes the humerus, a body wrap should be applied around the body, ensuring it is not pulling too tightly around the sternum. Now here we will imagine that this live red-tailed hawk is recovering from an ulna fracture repair. Areas of inflammation and edema may benefit from cryotherapy, which can be performed in smaller avian patients with frozen water in the finger of a glove for three to five minutes applied to the skin. This patient has feathers in place that would not usually be there after a surgery. When the bandage is removed, passive range of motion should be done at least once daily. Passive range of motion should be completed with one hand under the humerus, supporting the proximal wing, and the other slowly extending the elbow and the carpus. You should slowly extend to full extension, then back into flexion in one smooth movement. If full extension cannot be obtained, do not force the wing. Complete full extension and flexion up to 10 times during each session if the patient will allow. Along with passive range of motion, cryotherapy, and bandaging, photobiomodulation can also assist in the healing process. For the purposes of this video, we will imagine that this area of the wing is devoid of feathers like the barred owl seen previously. Laser is commonly used therapy in exotic or non-traditional animals, but the dose is varied. For the combination of soft tissue injury and fracture repair, I use a small non-touch probe set at one watt for the thin distal wing, including radius, ulna, metacarpals, and phalanges, and two watts for the proximal wing of larger birds with larger amounts of muscle mass, such as the humerus and shoulder. The dosage 
should be around 10 joules per centimeter squared with the laser continuously moving over the affected tissue held about three to five centimeters from the skin. This therapy can be repeated two to three times weekly for the first two to three weeks postoperatively, then once weekly after that to support continued healing. With the class four therapeutic laser, the patient should be hooded or their head covered with a dark towel to protect their eyes. All wild birds experience some degree of stress in captivity during treatment. Hooding and being handled by a trained technician can reduce this. The treatment protocols suggested here should always be balanced against the stress of handling in each patient and care should always be taken to prevent further injury during treatment. Thank you for joining me today for this tutorial on early postoperative wing fracture management in a bird.